We would be honored if you would join us. Everyone's invited, of course. Hey, Star Wars fans and collectors, thanks for tuning in for episode two of Setting the Scene. Really, really excited about this one. You're going for a little bit of a Rogue One cross with a New Hope sort of scene today. Using the Tantive Four Corridor, I'm really, really excited to set some cool scene up in this one. I want to go for Vader. I want to go through marching through, taking out Rebel Troopers with some Stormtroopers. It's going to be great. Let's check out what we've got. Um, so first up, we're going to be using the new Rogue One Darth Vader from the Vintage Collection. Pretty great figure. Um, I will explain my sort of basic customization when we go through to look for the figures. Also going to be using the Rogue One Stormtrooper from the Vintage Collection and I will be sneaking in the Luke and Han Stormtrooper disguise figures as well from the Vintage Collection. It's just because I've only got two Stormtroopers and I needed a couple more and uh, they do look pretty much the same so I thought I'd use them as well. And last but not least we're going to use four Rebel Fleet Troopers also from the Vintage Collection, there is the one that came with the Tantive 4 and the previous release back from 2011-2012. So I've got four of them. Um, one is as it's released and four are slot have done some head swaps of some different looking troopers. So um, before we start, let's take a look at the figures and we'll get into it. All right, here are the figures in question. We have the Rogue One Vader, which are... Uh, I do have a wire in that cape, so that allows a little bit of flexibility with the cape in posing as well. We have four stormtroopers here. I know the diehard collectors will know exactly which ones the uh, Luke and Han are, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully they all blend in for the video. And here we have four rebel fleet troopers. That's the original. There's a couple with some different heads there and big double blue tack and some blast effects that may come in handy. Um, we'll see how we go. Also just wanted to add that I will be using some of these pegs that are stored underneath the uh, diorama here. I'll pick them out in a minute and uh, yeah, we'll use them for the stands. And hopefully that helps pose a few figures up. All right, so I think we're just going to start with Vader um, here. And basically, what I want him to do is be having having have him doing like a like a strike, like he has just taken one out. He's got the uh, blade sort of up behind him. Just need to adjust my light a little bit. Hopefully that's okay. So I'm really hoping I can. Uh, Almost have him marching through. Like so. Maybe have that a hand up. As close as you can get to a fist. Someone told me there was a 5 POA Vader that came out um, in the Force Link line that had a fist. And... Uh, it's one I don't have. Um, I'm not actually sure. I, I did some research and actually couldn't find it, so I'm not sure um, what that one is and what set it came in. Whether it came in a set like, um, you know, one came with the Imperial Probe Droid. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to find out which one that was if there was one. So I kind of want to just. Close him up a little bit. We've got a little bit of a flare with the cape. I'll sort of pull that one down a little bit. I don't want it to take up heaps of room as he's stomping through the corridor because it does sort of stick out about back a fair way like that. But um, won't matter too much. This sort of this sort of side will be behind him. Um, just trying to get those sort of folds in the right place so it creates a sort of a natural flow of the robe. So hopefully that looks okay. Just trying to find a good place for his lightsaber that would appear to be a natural strike. So I do like to sort of play this out myself, um, bring that lightsaber down and sort of casting it up as, he, as if he'd slash through someone. <clears throat> 
excuse me. So you can get straight out like that. Maybe a little bit up. So we may tweak this at some point, um, working out where he's going to stand. Uh, those pegs aren't going to help at all with this one because he needs to be in the center of the diorama. So I will bring in my old friend Blue Tack here and hopefully he's at a good enough sort of stance that uh, he's not top heavy or anything on a certain side and uh, I do actually want to just try and get the Blue Tack to sort of sit on the back of the foot there so it is hidden when it comes time to uh, take the shots. So I almost want to get him sort of through the corridor. He's already made his way halfway, almost uh, probably a third of the way down the corridor. He's probably already taken out a couple of guys on the way through. And that gives room for a couple of stormtroopers to uh, stand behind him. So there we have Vader. But it can take a little bit of tweaking just to sort of get him to sit right again. Cape sort of flying around a little bit, but that's okay. I think he seems to be in place there. So basically we're going to have a we're going to take a slash victim here. <laughs> this guy's going to be this guy's going to be the victim on this uh, this particular bit here. And his little uh, clip has fallen off the boot, so I'm just going to leave that aside. Not entirely necessary. So really want to just get this guy looking like he's uh, falling backwards to a point. Try and work out whether that's a good placement for that peg to go. So that may actually require pulling pulling Vader back a moment, a little bit, just pushing him back. So I, what I will we'll do is I'll put him aside for the moment. And, uh, he can still hang on to the blaster, but um, I'm going to cry and make this a little dramatic. <laughs> Maybe not kicking up so much with the other legs, so sort of got him. Yeah, imagine Vader's just taking a swipe across him with his lightsaber. So I sort of add that peg to the bottom of his foot, like so. And uh, I'll just pop that in there. Now that's not the tightest fit, but uh, I should Yeah, certainly not the tightest fit for those pegs uh, in the in the base there. But we'll work with it. I might just use a touch of blue tack. I was hoping that'd be a nice snug fit, but uh, having not actually tried it yet, we'll just, we'll just have to go with it and hope that that's enough to hold him. So I can re put Vader back into the diorama, and I will just tuck a little bit more blue tack just behind his foot there just to try and hide it. If I zoom up down there. There we go. So Vader can get back in there now. Having just taken this guy out. Just deciding on this this effect here that might imitate that strike, and there is a little clip here that will go on. No, he's going to fall over. 
So what I might do is I might actually blue tail that foot down. Bring it behind him. And we'll see. See how that looks. It's not the prettiest, I don't like using blue tack too much, but that doesn't seem to be too bad at this stage. Hopefully it will hold. Um, so what it's all about, this is about sort of setting up and trying not to get angry at your figures. Um, which I'm sure happens to a lot of us. But um, now I'm just sort of finding a space on this figure. What I might do is actually just tack that one down as well. And uh, once we get the photo, it shouldn't show up too much. So there it is. He looks like he's a uh, he's coming through. Yeah, we're gonna bring in a couple of stormtroopers behind Vader here. You just zoom back out. So I like the idea that uh. Vader, much like Anakin, would lead into battle. I know we didn't see that in the New Hope, um, but you know by that point, Anakin hadn't really been established, and uh, yeah, he was definitely the kind of lead from the front kind of guy. So we're gonna keep him that way. going to get a couple of stormtroopers just coming through this doorway. I imagine that he, uh, Vader would have, you know, sent a small squad in, and, but you know, as they're getting taken out, maybe, maybe they didn't fare so well, and uh, you know, he had to take matters into his own hands while still bringing a new squad of troops in with him. So, again, just that one felt a lot better, that peg. Uh, this foot is a lot tighter, shallower, so that peg sort of sits in there nicely. Don't worry, these stormtroopers won't all be uh, in the good fight. We'll have one taken down at some point. So, I'm just going to tuck him in. there. That way we have a couple of stormtroopers on Vader's flank as they're getting through the hallway. Now what I really wanted to do with one of these is I do want to have a couple of these rebels um, well, I want to have at least one of them sort of kneeling down the hallway. So that's kind of an easy pose, but this figure is, uh, you know what, it might work. It uh, doesn't have the best knee articulation. It may be a little bit troublesome uh, when we want to get his knee sort of flat on the ground, but uh, I think this can work. So it's all about sort of just trial and error. Perfect. Let's have a look. So that kind of looks all right. Just pivot that foot down a fraction. So his foot is flat on the surface. And uh, bring that blaster rifle sort of up to up to his shoulder, like so. 
it is actually a resistance resistance blaster rifle but um, I imagine the resistance had a lot of sort of secondary secondhand weapons so to speak left over from the Empire days and I like the idea that in uh, in this little scene I've got going that uh, word hasn't quite spread of, of uh, you know the menace of Vader from the end of Rogue One so these troops haven't heard the story they're still not ready to run <laughs> But uh, this guy, I want to I want to have him pushed up against the wall. Vader's just you know th force throwing him against the wall. Um, so I'm actually going to have the sort of helmet sort of covering his face. This is where blue tack's going to come in handy again. Just want to get those sort of feet pointing down. You know he's a little bit. Still holding the blaster. Actually, no, I won't have him holding the blaster. You know what? Yes, I will. <laughs> you know, Vader's not too worried about blasters. You know. So this one... Still got blue tack on his feet from when he was on the shelf. So whether I want to... Sort of having as if he's just been... Thrown on there. You know, still sort of sticking out a little bit. have him really sort of pushed up against the wall. I think I like that. I think that's cool. So we can get a nice big nice big chunk of blue tack here. Square on his back. Make sure that's gonna be hidden enough. Sticking up against the panel. And then sort of push those limbs up against it. Make sure that helmet's down covering. Boom, there we go. Another victim. Alright, so this time I'm going to get a, uh, a stormtrooper. This guy didn't quite make it. Just gonna try and get him to sort of lay in a pose there. It's always hard with this armor. Shoulders, you can never get the arm to sort of sit right up. And it does look kind of funny when you twist it up because the armor looks like it's part of the underarm there. Um, but I do like the sort of drama of that sort of arm being way up. You know, he's lost his blaster. So we might just put him, him there. So I want to try and hide the printing on that leg. So this guy got taken out in the first wave. And I think with this other rebel, I think he's going to be another another one of this sort of last line of defense for the ship. Just stand alongside this one. This guy's sort of an older, older rebel. So, uh, you know, he's dedicated to the cause. He's been in the fight for a long time. He's probably seen some stuff. You know, he's ill fight to the very end. This guy. So uh, I am going to. Bring on one of these pegs again. I'm gonna glue these in. They're no good. There's a little ammo belts that sort of sit around the sit around the leg. They're just pegged into the back. 
and uh, it's not the best. Again, these Rebel Fleet Troopers really don't like the pegs. Some, just something not quite happening for them. Thought they'd be uh, deep enough and and all that, but not so much. But that's okay. Got a trusty friend, Blue Tack, hasn't steered me wrong yet. Now we've got one more Stormtrooper. You know what? I'm actually going to change this up a bit. I want to have this guy having a little, uh, little tussle with this guy. A little hand-on-hand -hand tussle. Uh, maybe trying to stop each other from getting a shot off. A little bit of a wrestle. You know, they both caught each other in the front lines and... Uh, Maybe this will, uh, so I'm going to just completely change this up a little bit. It's just an idea that just come to me while I was doing it, so let's let's have a go. So yeah, I want to get that sort of blaster. I don't think it changes the guy's story very much. Stormtroopers grasped the end of that blaster. He's trying to take that blaster from the Stormtrooper. It's a little tricky, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. Hang tight, folks. It's okay if these guys are a little bit... Uh, Loose-legged. So what I'm going to do is, because I know the Stormtrooper pegs are going to be work well, so I'm going to use that one. Oh, it's really tight. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to put it on there first, and then we'll place him on, give him a push down. Yeah, I think it actually works quite well. Now we're done. We've just got a couple of little blast effects here. I'm just going to place that one. Be nice if they were a different colour. Uh, you know, what? I don't know if I'm actually going to use the effects. I'd, I'd prefer that they're uh, accurate colour, but. Um, I might give it a shot anyway. Just poke that one on the end of that blaster. It's about giving it a crack. I don't want to make this something that makes it seem too hard. I really want to sort of give this a shot and see how it, see if I can make it look the best as it possibly can. It doesn't look great with the blue tack at the end, but uh, hopefully come time to get some shots, it'll, uh, it'll look okay. It looks like he's firing off. Maybe I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. So there we have it. I'll uh, dismount the camera and we'll have a little pan and then we'll get some shots. All right, and here's the scene we've come up with. Sort of rebel fighting a stormtrooper. Another rebel there, this one's been victim of Vader's force use, victim stormtrooper, a couple of stormies at the back, just burst through the door there, I'll leave that open. Last line of defence, these rebel troops. Let's try and look down the, down the corridor here. Yep, 
yeah definitely let me know what you think this is a cool little setup I'm actually gonna try and try and keep this on the shelf as it stands because I think it worked out pretty well but yeah definitely let me know what you think guys in the comments and uh, yeah we'll get some photos Again, just a quick look for a wrap up. I appreciate all of you watching. I really hope you've enjoyed episode two of Setting the Scene. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And uh, yeah, definitely open to some ideas if you want to throw some down in the comments for some scenes you'd love to see recreated. Um, this was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this diorama piece i'm so glad i spent the money and bought this tentative four corridor worked an absolute treat for my display here so yeah let me know i've got a couple of ideas in the bank um so yeah stay tuned for them and uh yeah definitely let me know appreciate you watching till my next video may the force be with you always We're a little rushed, so if you'll just get on board, we'll get out of here.